I hope all of you guys can uh, see my screen. Uh, it's kind of raining here and uh, with a lot of disturbance, but uh, I hope you guys can hear me well. Good. Um, when talk about briefly about uh, our initiative, uh, it's called Community Productivity for Development. Uh, it's a refugee uh, founded and led initiative in Rhino Camp, refugee settlement. And of course, uh, in Rhino Camp Refugee Settlement, uh, we have uh, quite a number of people. Uh, and those are the figures, 20, 127,000 plus refugees uh, who are living in the settlement. And out of which most of the refugees are from South Sudan, where I come from. And uh, this is one of the recent photo that I took. Uh, it was taken last year in November 2021, so uh, part of the, the refugee camp. Uh, about the uh, brief about community productivity for the government, uh, like I said, we have presence on the ground and uh, we became active uh, in 2021. Uh, where we ran sort of activities, uh, but it was initially you know, put up in 2019. Uh, so we came to notice or to know about uh, the gosh uh, that was last year in uh, uh, November, November, where we were introduced uh, by someone called uh, Steve. Covers, he works with rock agents and is one of our supporters. He stays in Berlin. Our objective you know, is to promote safe use of technology to promote the environment from global warming and also to contribute to poverty reduction through livelihood support from running and uh, community development. And we also deal in uh, youth empowerment, uh, both women and uh, men. So we are so inclusive. And uh, we also promote uh, uh, open access to technology. Uh, and this is the area that I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about it uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, I mean, it's meeting. Uh, our vision you know, is to have a platform that Matthew, you do happen to sound a little bit far away. I'm not sure if the headset was moved down too much or something. You sound a little bit too far. I can't hear you too well. All right. Is everyone able to hear Matthew I, I all right? Can hear you well. I can hear you well now. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit raining and it's, the rain is too much, so it's kind of it's starting. No I, I, I will share the slides because uh, they are after here. Uh, and uh, where we focus in more on uh, focus more on the protection, youth empowerment, and the system we have to be in the refugee camp. And the one of the activities that we are going to focus on is the repair cafe. Uh, center, uh, how it works and what we, we do in the repair cafe. Uh, in the repair cafe, we do fixing or uh, repair or we handle the fire events. We also do training, we have open access information. Uh, we have also open access to tools. And uh, in the repair cafe, we also, it's a, a maker space or anti-revolution where I just come and make up or do prototyping some where things that are uh, no solve problems within people. Uh, also do collection and recycling of electronic waste and the things that make this work. And uh, some of the things that we have done uh, the training on the past years, repair cafes events. 
something on a solar charger. Uh, this also uh, being a prototype in order to solve uh, problems or power within the, the refugee camp because access to, to power has been something that, to power that people can use for charging their, uh, their devices had been a, a challenges a little bit. So uh, through a training that entailed and uh, the team was able to, to proceed and uh, do the prototyping of this solar uh, charger. Uh, we collect scraps or faulty solars that are thrown, some are, you know, are not working, that people have packed them at home. So we collect them, assemble, and uh, we try to, uh, to solder them to to use it for, for, for charging. And it's worked on so well. And uh, we used it and uh, uh, it's helping out in the, in the camp. Uh, then the next uh, one is the automatic water dispenser that also we, we try to, to work on them. Though it's also still in the process, uh, we are still trying to uh, to, to, to work on it so that it uh, suits its purpose. Uh, this prototype came after uh, when COVID-19, you know, uh, hit us in the settlement. So uh, we tried to look around and come up with the solutions that you know can, uh, can at least avoid contact so that people cannot, you know, uh, when they are washing their hands, they cannot be able you know, to open the tub and, and wash. So these water, automatic water dispenser, it uses motors uh, and uh, the sensors, of course, uh, where we got some Arduino uh, boards that we loaded up a uh, program and uh, uh, be able not to, the fan rotate, I mean, the motor rotates which allows the flow of the water uh, outside so that someone can easily uh, wash their hands. Uh, in one of these picture, uh, this was during the testing of the, uh, the prototype that we, we worked on. And of course, it's still in the, in the, in the process uh, of its completion. So it's not yet completed, but we are trying to, to, to build it. And this is also a way of us, we are trying to, 
to, to, to, to be innovative uh, as some makers, to also promote technology in the refugee camp, much as uh, many of the people are focusing on the uh, formal education. So thought wise of bringing such innovatives and as well include people who have not gone to school to, to learn uh, such things. Uh, this is also still one of the pictures during the, the assembly of this uh, solar uh, solar powered uh, solar powered uh, uh, water dispenser. And uh, I just want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the situation uh, of us, the refugee in the camp. I mean, the, in the camp. Um, plus some of the solutions that uh, we thought would be uh, possible to, to reduce some of the things. Um, we have two uh, situation challenges. You know? uh, one is what people need is the human connectivity and uh, that includes the livelihood and the safety support. Uh, communication devices for learning, uh, there are things concerning you know, the technology aspect. And then also the access to, to information uh, that is so vital. And uh, we also talked about uh, the, the other need is the future development, like the access to education and, and basic uh, skills or professional trainings that you know, uh, can be used. To, to train these people or the fellow refugees for self-employment. Uh, other things also on the uh, entrepreneurship aspect uh, for people, you know, to, to be self-resilient. So uh, that's some of the, the future development plans that uh, uh, once someone is trained on and have, I mean, have access to education or literacy, uh, but of course be uh, self-resilient. And then uh, we also looked at the impactful solutions that, uh, uh, that comes along uh, those two needs. We say that access to, to energy, which is uh, used uh, to improve the safety at night. So uh, this falls along the repair cafes that we do and uh, through the fixing of devices, so we tend uh, to improve the safety of uh, community members applied through when uh, their lighting system or their solar lanterns are fixed. Uh, we also looked at uh, children studying at night. Uh, so coming up with such innovative ideas will uh, help children uh, have access to, you know, to study. And then we also, it also brings the income generating activities, of course. Uh, then uh, looking at the business owners to continue, you know, operating even at night when uh, some of the issues are solved. And then we also looking at the, the improved the digital connectivity uh, within uh, the refugee camp. And in terms of the technology aspect, of course, uh, uh, the, it allows you know, access to digital society when people are able to connect um, and learn something digitally wherever they are, much as we in the refugee camp. So uh, in the space, we, we allow this also to, to, to happen. And, uh, the, the creation of the jobs as well due to such innovativeness within the uh, the space. So uh, these are all affiliated to the repair cafe where uh, we are looking more into it being a maker space for making hardware. And the reason as to why we were not able to incorporate sorts of the things uh, I mean, why we are focusing on the hardware aspect because the issue of the connectivity aspect, so which is so poor in within the the settlement. So um, 
among some of the challenges that we have on, on Gram is the mobility uh, aspect where we couldn't reach out to, to many youths in order to share out such innovative ideas and also have more team on ground as well, coupled with the human resource and, and the connectivity aspect where internet access, is, it's a little bit a challenge where someone has to, you know, uh, look for a specific spot in order to access the internet. And of course, the lack of uh, the funding in order for us to, uh, to promote you know, uh, the open access or the open uh, hardware makers activities within uh, the camp. So it has really tied us a bit to, to one location where uh, lots of the youths are left out. Uh, we are our future dreams, uh, you know, uh, to at least construct well distant uh, repair cafe centers and that that we can use to uh, to, to promote the uh, the access, the open uh, access to open hardware projects and for sharing information and for learning as well. And then uh, we also uh, dreamt of uh, having a mobile bar, a van that can enable us to reach out to many community members or to many youths within the settlement. Uh, how we started, I wanna just uh, take you guys through how our idea started. In, uh, in this first picture, this was in 2019, uh, when we, we came after in 2016, uh, we tried uh, to work on the repair uh, aspect. And uh, it was a mobile repair, of course. And then in the second picture, uh, where we were able to find a little bit of a bench or a table that we used to, to place our things and do the electronic repairs. And then the third picture, this is our current location uh, that we use as our office and uh, the innovation center or the maker space that uh, we are doing uh, the sort of the innovativeness like uh, making that uh, automatic water dispenser in. And uh, we are trying also to, to learn from uh, the Gosh community on how things can go on so that we can promote uh, um, so that we can promote you know, the, uh, the open hardware makers. So, um, and this is the team behind uh, the initiative. Uh, we are six in a group, and um, most of us now have uh, ICT background, though not a high level, but we are trying to at least to, 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 to learn something from the forum as well. And uh, uh, these are the, some of the partners that, that we worked with or that has been supporting us in uh, one way or another, uh, promoting our activities and uh, as well supporting us with some small funds for uh, running some of our programs. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so grateful to have this uh, session to share with you and also learn from uh, the Gosh community. Uh, so uh, being in the Gosh community for quite some four uh, months now, so it has given me or opened uh, my knowledge and uh, I'm trying to, to you know, to, to, to learn things. Uh, and then we are also trying to, to practice things down on the ground that, you know, can uh, solve uh, problems within the community. And I was, thank you so much. I, We'll leave this session now. I mean, uh, time for, for, for questions.
uh, that can come or comments. If anyone has some questions or comments, it's highly welcomed. Uh, 